In this Debaco University video, I'm going to be going over trends in THC accumulation in flowers and leaves over time, looking at some data to see how this cannabinoid accumulates in different parts of the plants over a period of time. All right, let's get into the trends of THC accumulation in flowers and leaves. So first off, this is the research article that I'm basing the information on, so welcome to take a look at it. Again, just providing a brief summary here. So the time course for accumulation of Delta-9 THC in flowers in medical marijuana plants. So floral and leaf samples were collected from two strains that they looked at here at multiple intervals during the flower induction stage. This plant material was collected from greenhouse grown plants. The accumulation of the Delta-9 THC in these samples was determined and we presented here in graphical form. So what do those graphs kind of look like? Well, here's what we're looking at. Uh, we have the same uh, sour willy a variety here. We're looking at that accumulation of our delta-9. Here we have the leaf and here we have the flower. So again, on our y-axis, we have the delta-9 THC percent dry weight in both examples. And then we have days post flower induction here on the x-axis. Uh, letter A, this kind of graph here, what this is showing, this report, is the average of three plants for delta-9 THC levels and floral samples is the solid line, and leaf samples here is the dotted line. Panel B over here is showing the delta-9 THC in floral samples from the top of the plant, which is the solid line, and the bottom of the plant, which is the dotted line. What we're noticing overall is that the leaf stays pretty stable and doesn't really accumulate a whole lot overall. The flower does increase over time, uh, but we can see that there's also some great variability. Looking here at the higher portions of the plant leaves versus the lower portions, seems like the higher portions tend to accumulate a little bit more, uh, especially towards the end here, we're noticing a little bit of a pickup there. Now the other variety that they looked at, um, make myself a little smaller, same basic uh, idea here, same basic kind of data collection. Uh, trends, we can see definitely uh, that flower is a little bit more variable. Overall, trending upwards as it progresses, and the leaf really not a whole lot, and upper leaves having more um, delta-9 THC accumulation than lower leaves, but both showing a little bit of an increase, a little bit of this bump up here uh, from day 50 to day 55. Now that THC um, content we're looking at, uh, the content of these samples from both strains increased in floral samples with increasing time post-induction. In leaf samples, delta-9 THC levels uh, decrease slightly during the same period. So as we saw there, when I say relatively the same, if we just look here again, relatively the same, but it does have a slight decrease here. Definitely not as dramatic as we saw with the change in the flower there, with this an increase in those. So the content variability, well, Considerable variation of the Delta-9 THC content in floral samples at each time point was co collection was noted. I tried to show that with the large error bars there on the graph. Multiple flowers were collected from different parts of the plant to generate an average. Now, THC content related to location on the actual plant. Well, floral samples from the top or high portion of the plant have higher levels of delta-9 THC than floral samples from lower portions of the plant. And this can kind of correlate with the amount of light they're getting exposed to versus the lower buds down here. This is why some growers choose pruning methods that try to get as many buds kind of pointed towards the light there as possible, try to maximize their cannabinoid production in those floral parts. Now, a uh, consistent pattern of accumulation was observed in the sense that the same pattern of accumulation was observed in two additional strains, as presented in the research, increasing the biological replication of this observation. The Delta-9 THC content was highest in flowers in the upper third, lowest in the flowers from the lower third, and intermediate in flowers in the middle third. To kind of give you that idea that you're going to have the greatest amount of THC, middle amount and then your lowest amount if you're looking at really trying to prime and pick that prime flower uh, for the highest levels of cannabinoid accumulation. So we'll this in this kind of data here provides you kind of an extra incentive to keep those buds pointed towards the light uh, to maximize that cannabinoid production there for you.